Hello everybody and welcome to the Wonder Year podcast with me, Paddy Raff, and my co-host slash producer, Rigsy, is here as well. Hi. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for all the amazing feedback. Podcast is going down really well. People are loving it. We're enjoying making it. This week's Wonder Year is 1993 with a brilliant stand-up comedian from here, Teresa Livingstone. This is one of my favourites, if not my favourite we've recorded to date. Teresa comes out of the block, blocks <laughs> very fast. With the embarrassing Yeah, she, she hits us with an incredible anecdote. Right back in 1993, it's just a thing. It's very beauty. Dairy Girls. It's like it, it could easily be as I, I didn't realize I was insulting her by liking her to Jenny, Jenny Joyce, the kind of oh, cheesy. Oh, as soon as she started talking, I was going, she's Jenny Joyce. <laughs> and <laughs> the Jenny Joyce is probably my favorite kind of non-obvious character in yeah. the Dairy Girls. So she starts strong and she keeps the momentum yeah. going. I, I, I really love this episode. Um, it yeah, sounds so like you're, you're likening her to a horse. Start strong, keeps the momentum going. That's a producer. Great over the I fences. Just, I just, I just want performance, yeah. consistency, strength, and depth. Um, Eighth of October is her show, but she'll probably end up yep. doing either a bigger. She's doing the, hers is the, called Class, I think it's called, and it's in the. It might be the wrong name. I'm pretty sure it is the right name, and it's in the Waterfront Studio. Eighth so that, of that's October gonna, this year. It's, could be. A, it's probably going to be sold out by the time where people are listening to this. So um, go and search her out online and and. Hopefully there'll be some kind of like an, an upgrade or, or a second date. And if you can't get a ticket for that and it's all sold out, then just head on round to Victoria Square, where I'm sure they'll have plenty of shops, restaurants and other things. You're sure too. that they will? No, they, they definitely I, will. I'm t- I was thinking about what time they might be going around now, because if the show's yeah. sold out, like, you can't go around at night, a lot of the places will be closed. But Victoria Square are the sponsors of the podcast. Uh, do a great gift card which is great if you're a crab at band presence and you can just stick it. Would you go to the cinema? Would you ever go to, would you feel embarrassed about going to the cinema and using a gift card? Would you be like, no? Why? No? No, because I was out with somebody for a d- dinner and they tried to pay for the dinner with um their, remember the £100? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's something about that that made me go, hey, should you be doing that? Is that like one of them things? But you can actually use your gift card in the cinema, um, in the in the restaurants, any of the shops. Um, so check out Victoria Square. Thanks for sponsoring the podcast, guys. Uh, we'll get straight into it. Let Teresa um, tell us the story of her amazing song for peace that uh, I think was instrumental in bringing about She's peace. She's got a lot to answer for, Teresa Livingstone. She, she should have like a blue plaque mm-hmm. in her school <laughs> on the assembly hall. Anyway, uh, Teresa Livingstone and her pod, or sorry, her wonder year is 1993. <laughs> Nineteen ninety three. So I was a fourteen year old celebrity in waiting. Oh yeah. But also a loser. Pending celebrity. <laughs> yes. We were I think we were all losers. Everybody's wonder year. There's seems to be like a common theme that people were sort of Are people going back to the year they were a just bit they weren't the person they are now, but they were gonna be. So Yeah. What were you doing then to nineteen ninety three? So nineteen ninety three was probably that so just starting into G C S E, so end of um key stage three. <laughs> Talking about very it, educational, <laughs> <laughs> but um, prepping for AS. Yeah, so I was like um, starting to write songs and thinking that I was, you know, a bit of a bit of a Whitney Houston, like actual sort of songs, for like it, actual like up serious, kind of. oh, serious songs because for my future pop career, not having any friends at school. Um, it was just a, a mixed bag, you know. Everybody else was out, sort of getting blocked, and I was at home, like rehearsing <laughs> in the bedroom <laughs> to the mirror, that sort of thing. This is a very similar origin story to um, Emer Maguire, who we had on. You supported Emer, didn't you? Oh yeah. Ulster Hall. Yeah. She said she's doing very similar stuff. Yeah. Writing, writing very serious pop songs. Oh God, no, Dad's not just pop songs. Like I, um, I did a song that year for Peace. <laughs> So I like to think I contributed oh, towards the ongoing face process Five years later, at the time. it all happened, yeah. And yes, you're welcome. Do you remember um, what it was like? Do lyrics? I remember, Patty? I, I wrote this song in 1993 and um, it ended up on UTV Live you're on kidding. Christmas Eve, 1993. What? So um, now I don't have the footage of it. I, I think we have like a recording of a recording of it, <laughs> but it's somewhere. And I, I'd written it for my, my music at school, like the GCSE, mm-hmm. and um, my parents were like, "This is just that, you know. This needs to go for. This needs to go somewhere." And I can't remember how, but it got on UTV Live, and not just on UTV. They decided to make a wee music video for me, <laughs> so they took me, fourteen years old, frizzy hair, my mum's makeup on, 
um, took me round the sites of Belfast to make this music video to my song for peace. And um, <laughs> they took me down, took me up and down the Shankle Road. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's me in a like a, a crushed velvet hat and the Dorothy Perkins jacket on and everything. <laughs> Miming to my own song, walking up and down the Shankle Road. I'm like, and um, and then you know walking through playgrounds with empty swings and mm. stuff like that. And they and pushed the swings before, so That's they were right. swinging as you yes. walked through. Yes, very yes, dramatic. and I'd be like this, how oh, awful! <laughs> like we're all being killed. <laughs> oh, awful. <laughs> and um, and it's my song, Christmas on the Run. Now I, I might, I should also Christmas add, on the Run, Christmas on the. Run. <laughs> I know it's Christmas That's a different on the song. <laughs> That, that has to be made in this song. <laughs> Christmas on no, it was Christmas on the... Now, I wrote this as a as a young person who had seen nothing in my life, <laughs> like no drama or no no murder. But I wrote the song from the perspective of a middle-class teenager, like, that's terrible. <laughs> that is awful. Isn't it awful? Isn't it awful? <laughs> and um, you know, those poor children. And, um, and then wrote this song and I performed it uh, seemingly for the rest of my life. I was singing that song <laughs> from fourth year at school until the day I left. They'd be like, and now Teresa Livingston's Christmas song. And you just hear people <laughs> like the national anthem. Yeah, every... <laughs> the end of the night. So at your school, you had to perform. Did you have to perform constantly, it live every time? Constantly. Like they'd be like, and because this priest died, we're going to have Teresa Livingston sing her <laughs> Christmas song. Her Christmas song for peace. You should have like done it like Elton John, re rejigged Candle in the Wind for Diana. Do you remember? You should have like yeah. rejigged it. Missing the trick there. So that's amazing. Christmas on the run. And you, uh, so you have like bad quality footage of this somewhere? I, ha or? I do have bad quality footage of it. You have to send us this if you can get us this. <laughs> we at this stage will definitely insert this. We need a we need a lyric sample. Yeah. My Go, what, what have you? God, got? we need a lyric sample. Yeah. It's, what have you got? Like, um, so remember? lyrics are things like it's now. <laughs> my follow up song to this was about Rwanda. <laughs> <laughs> you were going international. Everybody else was just looking to get like their first snog or whatever, and yeah. I was just like, "What's happening in the world? What else can I solve? How out? can I solve it?" <laughs> um, so the Christmas song, let me say, lyrics were like, um, it's time for us to end the wars <laughs> and show the children the open doors. Um, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so, uh, how can they know what, how can we know what they're feeling on their own? And then there's a big, there's a big octave leap, which I could never do. But I'd be like, Christmas <laughs> is a time for love. Oh God. Brilliant. So yeah, I'll, I'll have to, I'll have to take it out. That'll but anyway, I sang that for years and years and years, but it got me into the mode. I was like, I am, I'm going to make it. This is it. This is. It set you on the path. This will, yeah. They'll be showing this to me on This Is Your Life. <laughs> like, this is where it all started. And I'm like, that's right. And now the best you can hope for is that we might get the footage on the Wonder Year podcast <laughs> <laughs> instead of this your life. Close enough, like, you know, it's I, I like to think it's somewhere in that ballpark anyway. It's somewhere. Oh, geez, I definitely want to see this now. <laughs> this is going to be great. If, if nothing for, do you know what? And I was watching, um, obviously, Derry Girls, which mm -hmm. is finished, unfortunately. Yep. But the costume design in that, no, everybody, I'm sure there's lots of things that resonate with everybody from watching it. Mm -hmm. Like, it's brilliant in so many ways. But the costumes, I have watched every episode going, I have that, I have that, that's <laughs> yep. mine. Yep. Like every single part of it, it's that's just so on point. The costume, uh, head of costume on that is Kathy Pryor and she grew up in the street behind no me. Way. She gave me with best mates with my sister Claire. So I've known Kathy for like ever and whenever I was doing our show and we were like, oh, we're going to go to Kathy's warehouse and I didn't realize we're talking about Kathy from, you know, like yeah. that I knew. And they were like, oh, we're trying to get access to Kathy's warehouse. She's not getting back this and all that. And I was like, who is this mythical Kathy? And like, Kathy Pryor. I was like, Kathy, I'm literally, I was in the shed. I was like, I'm literally looking out my window <laughs> at the back of her house in, 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 in our street. So um, I just messaged me, get in, and it was like Aladdin's cave. Yeah. You know, it was like, um, Dennis's leather jacket and all hanging yeah. up and all the shows she's worked on she's just everything there but her attention to detail oh, she's very like fab. my sister she has like a photographic memory of those years in their yep. lives and so everything in Derry Girls is so on point That's and I, so I even is. lifted up um her there was a Man United 1996 Man United uh, I knew exactly the year um, <laughs> top sitting there and she was like that was my dad's and she's kept it you know oh, wow. for, for, so it is definitely very well observed but like I, you're like Jenny Joyce, you know, singing the song on stage. <laughs> you are the Jenny Joyce yes. <laughs> song for peace. That's the most insulting thing you can say. I know. It's been nice that's speaking to I, you. See you later. That's the first thing I thought of as well. Um, although, but yeah, yeah. Although Christmas, Shades of her. 
Shades of Jenny Christmas Thomas. on the Run does sound like one of those plays, <laughs> you know, that does the tours West Belfast, you know, like clubs, like the GAA club. <laughs> yeah. We're going to go see Christmas on the Run. <laughs> I know? was thinking more of the ones who were issued with the on the run letters. <laughs> <laughs> they a, yeah, like, come home le- for Christmas. Like a letter to Santa, you know, they get a, an on the runs letter and they get to come home. <laughs> that that actually reminds me of um, the, 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 t- the the film I want to write. It, it be, it's based loosely on it's Mrs. Mrs. Ceasefire instead of Mrs. Doubtfire, Mrs. Ceasefire. Okay. And it's about a man who gets out after the Good Friday Agreement, and it's, it's, he's not allowed to see his kids. <laughs> and so he, he, like sees, he sees Mrs. Doubtfire for the first time, first time, and doesn't realize that it was a big, big hit while he was inside, <laughs> and thinks it's like a movie nobody's seen. So he's like, "I'm going to do that." <laughs> so he decides to go and we'll explore that. So, t- uh, 1993, mm-hmm. big year for you. Your sort of Breakthrough song single. for peace yeah. um, that went went viral. <laughs> Went fungal in, in <laughs> Northern Ireland, and then so what about the Rwanda one? Then what was? What oh was my the crack god! That? So that was the difficult second album that came <laughs> after it. I was like, I'm never going to match this, and that was "Hold Out Your Hands and Give." Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sounds a bit raunchy, but the worst, the worst lyric in that one was. All they need is love to stay alive. And I was like, clearly that's not true. Food. I they think. also need yeah. water. Food. Yeah, there was an active drop in the mega sugar donations that year because they were like, don't we need love? Yeah, my it. love. Oh my God. So yeah, t- very just your well meaning, give. but really missing the point on I w- did, every Was the level. and give in brackets? Because I love songs like that. Hold out your hands in brackets <laughs> and give. No, I used to write things like different but the same. You know, oh. all that <laughs> Different but similar. Oh god! And did did the did that one reach anywhere near the heights? No, that of, crashed. And it burned. didn't happen. It didn't go. They didn't have you do that in the assemblies and no, stuff. Nobody wanted it. It was just like just. It must be the same for lots of one hit wonders where they turn up to do gigs. Everybody <laughs> just wants to hear the biggie. Do that one again. Just come on, Christmas on their own. But it's not Christmas, you know. Like it's July, <laughs> it's like St Patrick's Day, <laughs> Christmas. Oh my God, I'm looking forward to hearing yeah. that. So you were doing that. Were you doing uh, lots of performing in school? Were you doing drama and stuff like that? No, I really, really wanted to. I was constantly trying to find my way onto the stage and. Never quite, wasn't getting like, wouldn't get cast like as the lead in the play or anything like that. I was really like, mm. but um, yeah, I, I was, I got up to sing in front of um, everybody for the first time. And I've been, you know, when you're in your own bedroom practicing, you're fine, but I'd never quite experienced stage fright before, All but right. the nerves mm. hit. And my throat Effect just kind of yeah, yeah closed up, so it was like I I find that as well. The first time I ever did drama, I remember getting on stage to do something, and like your my vocal cords kind of like tensed, and I was yeah. speaking really high pitched. Yeah, all yeah. of a sudden, yeah. out of nowhere, yeah, it was really weird. No, I got up to it was like a a school talent show, and there was loads of girls like we're doing a like a dance routine. Do you want to be part of it? And I was like, thank you, no, <laughs> I'm rehearsing my own from Les Misérables. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I have, I've got my own solo and um, got up to sing and it just, my throat closed up and I was just like, I dream, I dream, and time come I. And it just, it got worse. The more I went on, the more oh the kids God. started to laugh, the more it, it just, it was horrendous. And like a teacher just put an end to it, just kind of went, it's not fair, let's stop it. <laughs> set you back. Just sit down. And you ended up though going on to do stand-up comedy and mm-hmm. having a career Well, that, that that came an awful lot later, yeah. But I suppose... All of that humiliation sort of plays feeds into oh, it. Oh yeah, yeah. War so that's the basis of nearly everything I talk or sing about now. I think it's just about getting revenge on the people that laughed. That's Look at right. me now, you know. That's right. Yeah. Look at me now. You still haven't heard of me. <laughs> Well, this is your life. Wonder your podcast <laughs> going to go viral and everybody. I want to bring back that song. Though I think it, it did cause the Good Friday Agreement. You could have been in Derry Girls easily. Like that's absolutely it missed very, a, the missed a trick. Very Jenny. It's the Joyce. one thing everybody's saying is missing from <laughs> Derry Girls. Yeah, the, uh, Christmas on the run. Um, so we normally like to take people back to 1993, um, oh. and like obviously that was a, a year because you were 14 doing GCSE. Do you remember the year fondly, or do you remember it just because like you were quite Geeky I do no I actually yes I there was the geeky parts of it but it's still a period of time I really like I loved all the films that came out that year the music wasn't great but I thought there was some I, I looked into it a wee bit and we do talk about the music yeah the I, kind of I disagree with Trace I think the music was outstanding. fabulous I thought the movie's a bit ropey Jurassic the, Park the other way about Jurassic Park was yeah amazing no, that's and the also exception. was it not the year there was a lot of really good sort of like Thriller, like courtroom drama. Yeah. In fact, actually, at Tell a Lie, it's reasonably good. You got Philadelphia and Decent Proposal. Philadelphia, yeah. In the name of the Father. Yep. 
And I thought Shin, when I was a kid, I thought indecent proposal was a decent proposal. A de- and I remember decent? when they got out of the extra vision, I was like, oh, indecent. I was like, <laughs> a decent proposal. It's a decent proposal. That. And I say yes to that. Yes. <laughs> See this in Seattle, Mrs. Doubtfire, which you've already mentioned, all oh, yeah. came out in 1993. But the music's brilliant. The music's well, kind of pre Britpop. I, I mean, probably wasn't listening to the brilliant stuff. That's maybe what it was. Well, we'll get to your birthday soundtrack in a little moment. But the okay. biggest track of the year, um, someone we lost recently. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I just don't tell you. I always like to have a little yeah, bit of a build it up. <laughs> 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 Not telling you, he died. Mm-hmm. It's like, who cares? Meatloaf. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, was that when I Would Do Anything for Love came back? Mm-hmm. Out? See, that was so Meatloaf did nothing for, not, not for love. He did nothing for like about 10, 15 mm-hmm. years before that because he was big in the, what was he, yeah. 70s through to early 80s? Yeah, Battle of Hell too. This was it's a big, See, sort of I, long way. I never knew Meatloaf with the, the long hair because he was kind of short hair by the time that came out. So I, like, for me as a kid, I was like, this guy's amazing. He's going to go far. It's like, he's already had a massive career. Yeah. What are you on about? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. what a breakout song. No. <laughs> All That She Wants is a bass. Oh, Quite yes. an odd, oh, lyrically true. curious yeah. track. Yeah, that so was it, what was it about? Is about a she's, all that she wants is, is another, another baby. baby. She's going tomorrow. Boy. So it's about a woman that's sort is of it, sleeping with men just to get impregnated, and I, then she's going to vanish the next day. Is that what that song was about? I think it was a diss track to Madonna. Remember, she was always going away. Oh and yeah, she was adopting loads of babies. Yeah. Do you remember? Um, was that yeah? Uh, no limit to limit to unlimited Brilliant. dreams, Gabrielle. And Mr. Shame. Blobby was very big in 1993. Oh, God. Yeah, he was on the scene. What was a lot about? What was that? Blobby I, was... Do you know what? Now you've Evans. reminded me. Yeah. That was that was the year... And my wee brother's going to kill me now. He got an inflatable Mr. Blobby that year for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> he was quite young, I might say. Um, and he took it with... We were like Christmas Day Mass. We were there. And every time, <laughs> every time there's the... The response that the yeah. congregation does. He just held up this life size Mr. Bobby and went, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby! <laughs> <laughs> How sacrilegious. I love that. And it's brilliant. Uh, I think by the end, Mr. Blobby was crowd surfing the congregation. Everyone was just like, <laughs> get yeah, in like there, a festival. You. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. What was the appeal with Mr. It Blobby? It was chaos. It was chaotic. Yes. And it was like on your live TV shows, if Blobby showed up, uh, you just knew he was going to start tipping tables over mm-hmm. and like, you know, jumping on celebrities. And it was just that. But funny enough, like I. Did he have kid, a backstory? Well, I was obsessed a wee bit with Mr. Blobby, you know, as a kid, like <laughs> wanting to see him. I wanted him to see, I wanted to see him crossing genres. Like I thought he would come into the news and stuff like that. But I realized it was just like <laughs> live and kicking he was going to appear at. Yeah. But I always was like, what's the crack with that? What's the and then I, I learned a bit more recently was I wanted to do something, including Mr. Blobby in a news story. Mm-hmm. In my TV show, where it was going to be basically that he he caused like a, a nuclear war almost, like because there was peace talks and they were interrupted by Mr. Blobby. It was a bit of a running joke, and we weren't allowed to do it. We weren't allowed to use any pictures or footage of him because apparently Noel Edmonds owns the copyright to oh. Mr. Blobby and is very very See? litigious. Edmonds. It's with very his partridge. stupid Ewok head. Yeah, <laughs> Alan Partridge hates Edmonds, and it's like it makes sense now when you when you, like it, it comes from a real place. The <laughs> yeah. fact that he created Mr. Blobby. Do you ever see the pictures of Mr. Blobby Land that is now derelict? Have you ever seen this? No. Oh, it's, oh, it's it's horrific. You know an awful lot about him. I, like I say, I was obsessed with him. <laughs> I wanted him to make like a comeback, and just I just loved the kid. The reason I actually really loved him was because I outwardly hated Take That. I used to ri- wind my sister up. I I did like their music, but I knew my sister loved them so much that I used to be like they're crap, and I. Would just no matter what I would say they were crap. He kept take that off Christmas number one with that's M- right. Blobby, Mr. Blobby. Do you know what? I that's another thing talking about Dairy Girls again about thinking that I was in Dairy Girls, but I went to see Take That 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 in nineteen ninety three as yeah. well. We're in, in the, the King's, King's Hall. Hall. Yeah, yeah. I think our Claire went there, and I hate Take That now, mm-hmm. but see it that, and I wasn't. I'm not sure I was even a huge fan. It was just like the first massive gig I'd gone to. Yeah, and didn't really know how to behave. So my friend and I were like. People bring banners, posters, <laughs> stuff. So we're going to make one. So we got a uh, like a bed sheet and painted like out the back of her house with blue paint. We painted "Take that, take us," right? In <laughs> massive, <laughs> massive, massive letters. And I was like, it was a sheet. I was like, How, what are we doing here? Like, we're going to be like, hold, hold it, hold yeah. it up, falling down on our faces. And uh, we got we, our seats were up and we were standing up in the balcony, but. Um, her dog walked over the paint whenever it was drying <laughs> and smudged the bottom of it. And um, so it still kind of looked right. But from it, <laughs> we held it up and showed like her mom. She was like, that says, take that, Jesus. And then <laughs> take and we were like, Jesus. we'll just bring it anyway. So we hung it over and it was like, take that, Jesus. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god! And screamed the whole night. But yeah, I I mean, it wasn't even that big a fan, but I lost my mind at that gig. I you, sh- you should have brought that to the mass with Mister Blobby, like <laughs> disrespecting <laughs> that Jesus, <laughs> Blobby Blobby. <laughs> but you have to see the Mister Blobby land is is really oh creepy, like because it's it, so. it was it was ma- made at the time at the height, and I don't think it, I don't know if it ever opened or whatever, but it's been left to to nature, and nature has reclaimed it. It is odd. It's a bit like Teletubbies land. There's another Teletubbies one that opened for a few years and then it's just been left and it's abandoned and like kids on TikTok went and do like, oh, you know, the rummage round in like derelict buildings. Yeah. Uh, it's very freaky. Dystopian yeah. nightmare. Yeah. I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> I basically want to go. All the music in 1993, it's a little more credible. You had um, Automatic for the People, R.E.M. Yeah. And everybody Hurts, big hit, 1997. Or Radiohead released Creep. Oh, Did you have any interest yeah. in this music? Uh, that was in 1993. Sorry, 1993. See, that's the sort of thing I love. I love that song now, but I think when I was 14, yeah, this all would have been passing me by. Smashing Pumpkin, Sammy's Dream, Blur, Modern Life is Rubbish, Cypress Hill, PJ Harvey, The Breeders, Killing in the Name of. Uh-huh. So this is, you know, it's all really great stuff, Solidator. but I'm not expecting yeah. you to have been into that when you were 14. What were you into in 93? Like, what was your big... Take that. You were saying you were liking kind them because of, but, everybody else was, yeah, but yeah. what were you really actually into? Um... God, I am a massive Tori Amos fan. Oh. Massive. So, and I, I'm, I, maybe I'm confusing 93 and 94, but I was, so I don't know if you know Tori Amos, she's a piano. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I, I remember. And that's who I thought I was as well, you know, sort of this alternative singer, songwriter on a piano. I really wasn't. Did you like the the um, remix? Norman Van Helden remix? Yeah. That was Belter. Yeah. And then that was a couple, because I, I think I was about sixth form. See, I think of everything in school years in the 90s, but um. No, it would I, have been a bit later, like. Yeah, yeah. No, I did. Loved her. So, Tori Amos and sort of maybe anything. Tony Braxton? No, no. Celine no. Dion? They were that year. Janet maybe Jackson? These are all top 10. Celine Dion, maybe a bit sort that of That was like, early days for uh, Celine Dion. Like, 93 was quite early for her, I thought. She didn't yeah. have too, big, too many big hits yeah. then. Why do you know so much about Celine Dion? Just, I just know that she kind of, because I loved, I loved. Is there a Celine Dion land you're going to tell me about? (laughs) An abandoned. (laughs) Abandoned Celine Dion land. (laughs) Yeah, that would be class. Um, No, I just remember like she was, she hit the peak around 98, which was my wonder year with Mm. the the Titanic theme tune and all. So there was a, probably about a five year progression to that. I would Mm -hmm. say you can kind of know she wasn't about for too long before. Mm-hmm. She was big in like Canada and stuff yeah. when, whenever she was a kid. Yeah. But that was before. <laughs> Why are you talking about Celine Dion so much? <laughs> you said, you were like, do you know much about Celine Dion? No, was, first, first of all, I was, first of all, yeah. I was yeah. asking oh, Teresa and saying, well, didn't you expect me to give this part of history of, well, Celine Dion, yeah. Yeah. I don't know much she about her, but here Montreal. is her entire yeah. life. <laughs> she was a quiet child. <laughs> that was the very, you know, she she wasn't that popular around that time. Yeah. But she oh, she no, brought it back, you know. Let's skip what, 93. 93 is a terrible year because it wasn't good for Celine Dion let's do a different year (laughs) (laughs) Uh, oh dear so yeah lots of really good music I think anyway and then we've already talked about the the movies and lots of good TV as well first episode of Shooting Stars loved Shooting Stars Uh, I really loved that 1993 I thought that was later well it probably only hit its peak later on I suppose like Celine Dion it it, it like had a speak around ninety eight. It took it took a few years. Didn't represent Switzerland though in the Eurovision. No. So it had, I loved uh, uh, shooting stars. Was one of those uh, shows where I, I kind of did this thing going into school. My sort of thing that I would do. The the reason I was kind of useful to anybody was I like had like an encyclopedic encyclopedic memory of what had gone on on TV on the weekend you know that was uh-huh. funny and you know and I, they were like Paddy what was it they did in Shooting Star and then I would repeat a full bit but I just loved the guests that they got on it was like yeah. real random guests you'd like who, who was a Rika Johnson was one of the team captains but then you would have like some real like sort of indie kind of slightly uncomfortable person like Jarvis Cocker yeah. or something like why, sure why is he there yeah, yeah I loved that and the chaos of it <laughs> it was a bit like but ironically never got Mr. Blobby on it no. They were they were already bringing the chaos. Rivals. He was like, yeah. Edmonds wouldn't let him. <laughs> <laughs> Edmonds. Um, the last episode of the Fraser origin story, Cheers, um, oh, was yeah, in yeah. 1983. And the last episode of El Dorado. Remember oh, that? Yes. Yes, I do remember that. <laughs> I just remember because everybody said it was crap. Mm-hmm. And like I'd never, I don't think I ever really watched any full episode. But Are you, are you, this, what, you're younger than me. Yeah, but I was quite an old child. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I was into all the stuff my parents and my grandparents yeah. were into. You know, when you went visiting, like, your aunties and uncles. All the rest of them would be out, like, climbing apple trees and collecting conkers. And I'd be like, get down, you and You're going to hurt. And I'd be coming and t- telling on them, yeah. you know. I was one of those kids that your mom would be like, right, away you go. I was like, oh, what? Oh, 
hold on, what happened? You know, <laughs> wanting the gossip, basically. Yeah. But yeah, so El Dorado was for the, an older generation, but I do remember, like, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm 38. I'm 38. Oh, my God. I'm not ask your age, like, but we can work it out from <laughs> what your birthday was. 38 but, and a half. But yeah. <laughs> I'm only a few years younger. But yeah, El Dorado was crap. Was it the one with shaky sets or am I thinking of Crossroads? That's Crossroads. It was Crossroads. Had El Dorado person. was basically, it was it was kind of Brits Abroad, wasn't it? It was yeah, sort of expats, expats in, yeah, yeah. in like Magaluf or something. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know where it was. El Dorado, is that yeah. a place? Yeah, like, I think it's like a fictional. I made up place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, other bits and bobs. In um, 1993, Man United winning the first Premier League season. Ah, yes. And a lot of Michael Jackson stuff. Um, Oprah's big interview with Michael Jackson. And they had those big marquee interviews and his Super Bowl performance, which is now used as a benchmark. Is oh, yeah. yeah. That was did. the one he where he appeared in the roof. Appeared, yeah. So I know this is one of the things we were talking about this um, earlier, actually, as well. Is um, do you ever really like, you know, when you've had a few drinks and you're sitting in the house and you stick on YouTube and you go for your favorite songs and whatever, mm-hmm. going for like the best Super Bowl performances, like Prince Night, I think it was 2008, maybe. Purple Rain, they have to check it out. It's one of the best things ever. And it was lashing rain. Uh-huh. And he just absolutely smashed it out of the park. Brilliant. Um, and then, yeah, but, but Michael Jackson's one was is one of those ones you go back to. I kind of, anytime people put on Michael Jackson stuff, I'm like, I don't know if I can watch that after watching all the documentaries. But it is like yeah. amazing. It's basically like in the massive big stadium open our stadium there's like four big screens and he he appears on top of one dancing and everyone's like ah and then it, he appears on top of another it's basically impersonators mm. who are really good and you're you're looking about and next mm. thing you know it goes to the stage and it's one of those things you know like a, a, a load a, you know like a platform that comes up yeah. and he flies up in the air and lands and it's the real ones in the middle of the stage yeah, yeah. and it's like whoa and it is actually quite quite impressive Like I nearly said to you what year was it? what year yeah, was well, that? it's 1993, 1993. <laughs> yes. here's a question <laughs> for you enough. both stand ups right if you both became absolutely like humongous in like in the next six months, right? And you had a stadium tour that you were able to go on and you had a budget to spend 500,000 per mm-hmm. show, right? What would you spend the money on, right? Would you spend the money on things like incredible stuff like you just talked about, like springing up out mm-hmm. of nowhere? Would you have costume, incredible costumes? Would you have some kind of interactive thing with the crowd? How would you budget a stadium show if you became a stadium sensation? We'll go to Paddy first. I want, I wanted to do a fake, uh, a fake me basically in the a bit like the the Michael Jackson thing where I was going to get my brother to walk through the crowd as if he was you know and people being like ah or somebody bald Ian Thompson you know Ian Thompson you yeah know, the comedian he he basically doubled for me in one of the I was I did think get Ian to walk through uh, pretending it's me because like all bald guys look the same let's be honest. <laughs> And then, like, by the time he gets to the stage, it's just looking, I'm standing there going, who the fuck's this? <laughs> you know? Like, so I wanted the kind of do something, but, like, budget-wise... That's what you'd spend half talking. a million pounds yeah, that's on. Ian. <laughs> so yeah, he's very pricey. Paddy, you could literally do that, like, tonight. <laughs> I'd book Ian Thompson. Yeah. At, the, at the black the box in Belfast. He is yeah. very good. Just get him I think do, he's worth Just it. get him to do the whole set. He's worth it. <laughs> and then come on, not then really, go, it wasn't me. Not really what it was after. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think, like... Um, yeah, like as you see, like um, what do you call him, Kevin Hart doing? Like you ever see some of his big stadium things, and he's like real mad imagery and projection. And all. I don't know if that adds to it or takes away. Mm. I don't know. You put me on the spot. Confetti cannons, <laughs> you know, for <laughs> jokes, for certain jokes, just <laughs> blow it all on that. Three dancers, a better answer. I, yeah, dancers, that'd be good. I would spend it on a massive, like big band, like big, big oh, live, band. live music. Uh, back in what kind of music would they be playing just the type of stuff that you would be incorporating yeah. into your show yeah but with a to giant, back me yes. and like but the full like, would you, you know, score when the whole Blue thing would you the do the whole, whole would you score it all and, and make a big production of yeah. your songs then that'd yeah. be class actually Good and ball. then I'd also have back and dancers come out for some bits Christmas and, and the run and Christmas <laughs> just all on travelators Christmas on the run and then <laughs> when I <laughs> get like a like a like a massive choir of children Yes, but they're but it turns out they're all they've all been yeah killed. all on swings. They're all, they're all dead. They're yeah. not real. They're holograms from oh. dead children. <laughs> Taking it too far. Well, uh, maybe not. <laughs> um, or oh, and never not or and costume as well because I love. I don't ever really even like I don't really get up on stage without some sort of sequence on me, mm-hmm. even if there's like nine Spangly people in stuff. front of me. So you get like a big designer in Vivian Westwood oh, or yeah. something like that. Full thing. Yeah, costume changes. All it's a great over. answer. 
Patty. That was. was oh, I, I just want to say I do the same. Ian Thompson and Ian Thompson <laughs> in a wig to pretend and it's you. But that was confetti. I, <laughs> I I actually did I wanted to do, I wanted to do uh, um start slightly on the, that that sort of front where I did want to do for the SSE ones in October the the Father Pat band you know get because they're mates of mine like and we can all play live I was like well let's do it live and then I was like saying the my other friend who does the sound was like how much would it be and he was like it's going to be quite pricey like to get <laughs> enough you know amps yeah. in and stuff to do all that I was like ah maybe not you know, <laughs> let's, let's just would have been funny it, but like, never mind <laughs> <laughs> can't, can't be arsed <laughs> don't have yeah. the budget for it how much no <laughs> let's hear some questions from your kids yes here we go Ronan and Clara these so basically every okay. time I do a podcast and I'm heading out of the house the kids always ask who am I talking to and they always want to ask a wee question um, so <laughs> I've told like, hey? <laughs> I give them a bit of background I give them a background of, of, of Teresa no me, me and my wife went to see Teresa in the, did you book you were running the the Limelight Club when Teresa did it would you have been yeah. I have um, deleted a lot of that from my Your memory life <laughs> promoting I'm comedy like, yeah, shows were, yeah. <laughs> was, was, was I found quite traumatic Trump not tr- not because of the talent, who were wonderful, but just it was. I just found it very it's a nightmare. It very so we horrible. can't remember you basically. Okay, blocked it out. No, I remember. <laughs> I don't, no, I don't, I don't remember the experience of the comedy, but I remember yeah. the, the actual performances. Yeah. <laughs> we we get on to that. I was there. You will get on to your that performance and talk about teacher, former teacher. I'm sure you've got. Well, actually, because I told the son then, um, okay. that that's what your job used to be. And his question is, Teresa, my dad told me that you used to be a teacher. Who was your naughtiest people and what did they do? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, names and well, <laughs> you can change names ha- and venues and <laughs> the no- oh my god, there's too much. Um because I have taught so I've taught I taught in a secondary school in West Belfast. See mm-hmm. did, see how my voice changed when I said <laughs> yeah, that? You did, you took a hand break. Sec- um, so it's from two thousand and two till two thousand from two thousand and two to two thousand and five I was Head of music. So a, a mere, a mere, eight, a mere nine years after you'd written that song for peace, you were in. That's how I got the job. Yeah, <laughs> that was your audition. So, so music. Um, you were saying was it music? Were I taught music, but I also then I moved to. I had to leave the country after that, and I moved to Spain. <laughs> um, and I taught primary school there as well. So oh, I taught like really little ones all the way up to like A level as well. So God, not naughtiest kid. Um. I don't, the, this it wasn't West Belfast actually it was one of the wee kids abroad who was really really cute but just like brutally honest you know the way children can mm-hmm. just be so brutally honest um, and he was constantly told everybody that I was a man <laughs> <laughs> and it was his misunderstanding because in the Spanish schools I so I was called Miss Teresa it wasn't like Miss Living so it was mm-hmm. Miss Teresa and um, but for a year he was calling me Mr. Isa he'd heard it as Mr. Isa <laughs> and he th- and he was like she's a ma- that's a man's name that she's a man so t- told everybody I was a man told her pe- parents you know this is this is Mr. Mr. Tr- Isa <laughs> um so uh that's I, I'm giving you that really tame one because I cannot oh, divulge what happened in um <laughs> <West Belfast. laughs> you've signed an NDA <laughs> No, so, um, yeah, that is pretty. So you, you you wouldn't want to put your food in it then, because at that gig yeah. in the line, like you were talking about the school and some of the things, and there was somebody yes. in the audience that was that you taught. That had I had taught, he remember, and he was able to verify it all. I think some of the things from teaching secondary. Um, so whenever I left that school, I cried my eyes out because I had I actually loved it, but the first year I. I hated it mm-hmm. <laughs> and the kids were were the feeling was mutual you know they yeah. were like get out of here they were just doing everything and they do, it's kind of like a rite of passage I think for new teachers this was my first ever teaching job and I had kids doing everything they could to get me to not come in the next day so and my tactic was just to not react Didn't I wouldn't recommend it <laughs> so no matter what they did I'd just be like <laughs> just not react so they'd start like they used to steal my bag out of my classroom every day and I'd just be like and then they got really annoyed with that going you're not looking for your person I'm like no so just never reacted to anything so they started to like up the ante um, so you know I'd just be like drawn on the whiteboard or blackboard and like a sandwich would just come past my head and stick on the board and I'd just write around it I'd be like um, they brought a dog into the classroom one day Ooh. and um, dogs coming into school was always a lovely random moment of joy usually in the to playground bring one in. Yeah, yeah. no they good. just brought it in off the street they were like like through a dismiss. This, and he was like running around the back of the room and I just carried Ignored on with the, dog. the lesson. I was just like, and in another way, Mozart died a pauper. It was a terrible shame. 
After all that music he'd written. You invented gaslighting, basically, as a teaching method. Not happening. (laughs) Nothing is happening. So, um, yeah, lots of stuff like that, but also... They were they not like, look, miss, it's Beethoven. No, like a dog yeah, they were all Beethoven. just like, there's a dog in here. And I was just like, mm. oh. <laughs> so <laughs> the, how long did that, you said, did you do that just for the first year? You ignored all that. And then did you, were you not yeah. saying that by the time you came in the second year, you decided that. Yeah, I was a screaming from... banshee the second year I came right. back in. Just didn't take shit from anybody. Love it. But um, good times. We'll do, we'll do Clara's question now for you. Um, So here we go. Clara's four. They're super cute. What is your favourite song the same? What's your favorite song to sing apart Aww. from apart from your Christmas, Christmas classic? What um, is favorite. your favorite song to sing? And this this could be one from ninety three, or it could be like, what's your go to song whenever you get sitting at the piano and you just want to belt one out? Um. Oh my god, that's a really good. It's usually one of my own. Um, <laughs> <laughs> one from your canon. I'm trying. Yeah, God, I don't know. Karaoke truck then, if you're doing karaoke. Oh, my karaoke song go-to was always Don't Speak by No Doubt. Oh, that really? was always my big, um, I think I sang, I think that was another thing I used to sing at school all the time. And then you get stuck. I think I must be trapped in 93 to 97 because if I got up to do karaoke now, I probably would be like, do you have no doubt? Uh-huh. <laughs> and... Um, so yeah, that's a, that's one I used to enjoy belt night. Do you um, like that's? I always see your voice is quite sort of operatic or whatever. Can you like that's quite rocky? Yeah, you can... I suppose it's weird how I've ended up writing songs that are not typically in the style or in the in the register maybe that I wouldn't normally have sang in. Mm. It's weird. I don't know why I've done that. Made life hard for myself. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I hate with karaoke and I. Uh, to this day, I should I need to set aside like a bit of life at admin, like a half an hour where I'm going to pick a few songs where when it comes to karaoke, I can just pick them because I never know what to do no, or sing. Yeah, yeah. And I always inevitably pick a song with a really long solo in it. <laughs> and <laughs> I, and you just... end up standing there like sort of, I have nothing to do. <laughs> like every Shaking time. hands in the front every, row. Yeah. <laughs> nice to see you. Every single time I pick a song and I'm like, oh yeah, that doesn't, and I think, oh, it doesn't have a solo. <laughs> I put, and then you go, oh Jesus, there's a big <laughs> harmonized guitar <laughs> yeah. solo and you're just standing there and it's like, so that's what yeah. I need to do. I need to think, think of a quick, song quick that's dance. in my range that doesn't have a big long guitar solo. I, I don't think I've done karaoke in a very long time. I always, it's usually something you'd be Well, end that's up all going to change. <laughs> <laughs> we now come to this section. <laughs> um, but I did it on holiday. I remember doing it in Spain one time and I was wearing, again, this is the 90s, I was wearing these like white linen, almost see-through trousers, right, on holiday. So I had to wear like sort of massive white pants underneath just so it was, because it was an absolute <laughs> loser. See-through? Because they were probably designed to be see-through and I was like, yeah. oh dear, what an oversight. <laughs> I better put on some shorts. Right, the, and, you know, yeah, Dorothy These person. are see-through. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like strapping around Salou in Spain with these big like granny knickers on underneath <laughs> white see-through trousers. And um, I got up to sing, I think I got up to sing Country Roads or something like that, which I uh, <laughs> don't know why, but, but I got up to sing it. It was in the wrong key for me. So first of all, I started off like, almost heaven. Oh, it's a terrible key, And then that tried one. to go up like, yeah. West Virginia. Yeah, that's so, so hard. Yeah, so I spent the whole thing just duetting with myself. But my... um. <laughs> My sister was in the front, like crying with laughter. She was like, this is brilliant. <laughs> so I sat down. I was like, God, I know that's desperate. I sounded like I thought it was two people. She went, no, no. When you stood up and pulled your trousers up, you pulled the pants up by mistake. <laughs> so the trousers were kind of hanging half down. <laughs> <laughs> These massive white caps just up to here. Just like, oh, just give yourself a wedgie. And oh. That song, Country Road. Yeah, so, but uh, thankfully, she didn't get up to tell me. She was just like, just oh, enjoy brilliant. the moment. Clap along, <laughs> take photos. Oh, that is brilliant. <laughs> but Country Roads is one of those songs that is in that weird range. For, yeah. I think, there's, isn't there certain ranges that are bad for men and a range that is bad for women? And yes, that, that, that be, is yeah. one because when I used to DJ um, in the wedding band, like every time we finished a gig, I would stay on and DJ a bit. Um, whether they asked me to or not, I would just do it. <laughs> Please go. <laughs> Excuse me, we've got our own DJ book. And I'm like... <laughs> Country but, roads. Yeah, okay, let's take you back to a bit of country roads. And like, we didn't ask for country roads. But um, yeah, country roads is one of the ones everybody be up singing. And the girls would try and sing it in the, and you, you knew they would struggle. Yeah. So I would deliberately do that thing where I would dip it for the, you know, like, let's hear you. And then you heard them struggle. And there's a, there's a, there's a key change as well. So if they've gone for the higher octave, like, yeah, you know, it's the bit that goes, driving down the road, I get the feeling. And it's the yesterday, yesterday, yesterday. And you're just like, let's hear you. <laughs> Scream it. It's the same with bon, uh, bon Jovi living on a prayer. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Goes way too high. Cat's wailing. Love that. Takes me back. PTSD. 
when you were DJing, did you actually use that voice? Oh yeah, no, I don't think I did. I didn't really talk when I was DJing. I was very much sort of uh, because yeah, right. it was a, it was like at weddings. It's more we were as a band as well. We didn't do that whole thing of like cajoling people to get up. Mm. It was like if you want to get up and dance, you'll get up and dance. The worst thing is being forced. Yeah, you know, non consensual yeah. dancing. Nobody, if they're not going to get yeah, up, they're I'm not going to get up. So we, I we wouldn't have talked too much. But mm. if I had to talk, I did throw on a bit of a voice because it just sounded so weird. Going the buffet's open. <laughs> You know, you have to be like, okay, <laughs> folks, just let y'all know your buffy is now being served. Yeah, yeah. Here's Dirty Dancing Hit Mix. <laughs> Thir- 13 and a half minutes long, Dirty Dancing Hit Mix was brilliant. Uh-huh. You could just go away and go just to the toilet. press play. Go to the garage and down the road. And <laughs> <laughs> Leave Ian Thompson up at the desk. Just... <laughs> <laughs> Hurry in. Should we enjoy uh, revisiting Teresa's birthday party yep. in 1993? So we have your birthday. Again, Paddy doesn't like to get this information out because he's yeah, completely Let's say what, when the birthday is in case you get, you know, your data yeah. stolen. But basically, this is what the pl- the top 10 tracks were okay. on your birthday. Right. And we'll see whether or not you would have, you know, listened to them or mm-hmm. whether you would have had, or had them on or not. Yeah. And then we'll give you a few wild cards as well. Okay. So Lisa Stanfield, in all the right places. Remember one of her Lisa Stanfield? Oh, yes. Being oh, yeah, of course. Remember, I don't, I don't yeah, yeah, remember yeah. that song. I don't remember that song either. Oh, it was being... so, yes, it was in all the right places. Oh, there you go. Something else. Something. Shoot about your keyboard. <laughs> yeah. Funny enough. <laughs> that would have been brilliant. Just sitting there. Funny you should say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whip it out. Uh, it's a bass we've already discussed. Yes. Would you have that on? your? Which one was it? The All, all, that, all that She Wants. She wants. I, I love that tune. I think, see, and I mentioned this to you before, I used to be like a pub singer, not just some pissed lady who got up, but, <laughs> you know, like paid to go and play in pubs yeah. when I was uh, a student. And that was one of the ones that I had, like a, a wee pre-made Beat for yeah, yeah. That bit at the start and all the never bits. used it that much, but do, 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 not like, yeah. Spin Doctor Two Princes, brilliant oh, yeah. tune, absolute cracker. They were a really underrated band, and I went and checked them out again on like YouTube. They did a Glastonbury performance around about I think it was ninety four, and they were only three piece. Oh no, it was only a guitar, bass, drummer, and lead singer. They were phenomenal, like really, really That's good band. That's the only band. song of theirs I know. I don't. Know There's one. Else. They they had another one. Really sad fact. Another one in. Uh, Beethoven, you know the the movie Beethoven, like the dog, not yeah, the actual no, Beethoven. No, yes. You were. Um and that did a really good song I on did that. that. <laughs> Love Shaka that. Demis and Pliers. Oh yeah, what was the song? Was the Tease song? me. Tease me. Yes, I Tease do remember me. that. That's probably something I danced inappropriately to. <laughs> oh, At the age of fourteen, thinking yeah. I thought you were gonna say with your yanking your granny knickers up over your, <laughs> your C three oh. linen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> tease me, tease me, tease me. <laughs> Duns. Don's finest. Don's. Hadaway, what is love? Oh yeah, Brilliant. remember that. Yeah, that probably would have been on the background. That's still. The, I'll, I'll tell day. you about this party in a minute. Yeah. Gabriel dreams. Gabriel. Gabriel. Gabriel, Gabriel dreams. dreams. I have an answer. Oh Gabriel. yeah. Yeah. Um, and then a couple of wild cards from around that time, not in the top ten. Four non blondes. What's up? I mean, come on. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. brilliant. Brilliant. Big, you need a big she went. For that. She went on to write um, for Pink quite a bit. A lot of Pink sort of. Oh, is that uh, Linda, Linda Perry? Perry? Yeah, yes. She wrote loads of stuff for her. Yeah. RuPaul supermodel. Which yeah. is one of my daughter's favorite songs. <laughs> She's two, and she loves um, "Cover Girl." Oh, do yeah, a twirl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that came out in nineteen ninety-two or uh, nineteen ninety-three. House of Pain, jump around. Oh, oh yeah, brilliant. brilliant. I mean, yes, that was a go-to oh. one for the the wedding kind of crowds. Was you know, yeah. whenever you felt like you know we've had a few cheesy ones, now it's time to and you would do it like. <laughs> I, did, I just did it with my mouth I didn't even no do this no tracks yeah <laughs> <laughs> terrible DJ and then a couple of sad bangers that you could maybe end sad bangers <laughs> yeah you got R.E.M. Everybody Hurts mm-hmm. oh yeah as a massive R.E.M. fan my yep. least favourite R.E.M. song but I think that probably oh, yeah. everyone would tell what's your favourite R.E.M. song oh I could talk all day about R.E.M. but I would be just tell of... us what your favourite song is that's... <laughs> just answer the question <laughs> world leader pretend Crush with eyeliner or follow me. Follow oh, here me he probably. goes. Going for album tracks. <laughs> no, they're not. They're not. Are they album not album tracks? tracks? Are they not? No, I but they're singles. just funny story about it. Or not necessarily funny. My uncle's band, um, Big Self, supported REM in um, when they did Ireland dates because they were going from the early eighties. Am I right? Yeah. REM. Yeah. No, they were late seventies. Late seventies, early eighties. Really? Yeah. That late, well, okay. maybe early eighties whenever they sort of I, formed. Yeah. Well, yeah. so yeah, my uncle's band would have been kind of doing big things then, but and he they supported them in Ireland, maybe UK as well. And then they were meant to go and support them on their sort of, their first big arena tour of America when they were wow. hitting massive over there. And uh, they were meant to do it and all this sort of politics about their 
record company wouldn't pay for my uncle to go or all this stuff happened and they didn't get to do it and he still has a, a letter that michael stipe wrote him um from america saying how annoyed that he was that he couldn't come with him wow. wishing them all the best or whatever good lad, michael stipe. yeah and then they, they, my uncle's band didn't like so, but that was going to be their big thing yeah. was going to america and kind of trying to crack it with them oh, never God. happened wouldn't have been the best party if you end with everybody hurts by our <laughs> in, in in fairness we do have a present for you as well um a, 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 a theoretical present of what would be what? you always say that and people go oh we did, my we heart did, did a little leap there I was like, oh. we did plan to buy the presents we had all sorts of elaborate plans to buy <laughs> well, we're gonna every guess we we're gonna buy the present from that year that was the big thing you know oh right and, yeah and then fill the room full of a lot of these but a lot of these couldn't I, be ours doing and, and then but a lot of these items are like sort of considered vintage now yeah no offense, like but you know <laughs> 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 antiques, I could have said antiques. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but so even even replicas, these things are dear. But so now we just do. Let's have a theoretical present. Uh -huh. so it's much much easier. Like just, <laughs> it it takes about thirty seconds of me on the toilet hitting into Google. <laughs> what was the big yeah. gadget or toy from that year versus having to source? Go and get yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> so I've decided to give to you. Um, uh, a talk boy. Do you know what a talk boy is? Yes. Was that the thing where you record? Was that the thing? That yeah, was we Home Alone Two. Home Alone. Yes. Home Alone yeah. Two. So that would have been to play pranks. So would you have? Would you have had much use for that? What would you have done with a talk boy in nineteen ninety three? I probably would have recorded my own Hi. radio program into it. I did that with mine. I had a talk boy. Did you? Yeah. Well, it was more the news. We would do the news. Um, ad libbed me and my sister. Like, Mate, see me and my sister and used would... to do this. I have two sisters. What was your radio um, show called, Teresa? Do you know? I wish I could remember. It was probably just like Teresa and an unnamed sister. Did you ever do that where you you thought you were broadcasting? You might, you know, like on your radio, there was like a certain thing you could do to kind of like maybe broadcast out. So you would do it almost as if you were doing a live. Well, broadcast. we did, no, I didn't know about that. No, I would do it like it was for real. I yeah. probably would have done that or um. Yeah, I don't think I would have been like into pranks or, or anything like that. You would have been, been very just, serious. Yeah. So you'd have been using it to make demos? Yeah, yeah. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> and then the least favorite part of any um, po party and indeed um, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is okay. So this is the in your party. I always say that if you had your friends and family around, your the elders in your family would always like to take the tone down by reminding everybody or breaking the news. Did you hear who's, who's dead? dead? So yeah. this is guess who's dead. You're the, okay. person, you're the, the first person that's totally that's on the same wavelength. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> I thought this was just something that happened at Paddy's parties. No, when, when some... somebody do that, like somebody, but your your granny always say, "If you only so died? and so was here to uh -huh. see it or something." <laughs> oh like yeah, that. that's so, well, we're we're not going to go for a family member. Don't worry, we haven't talked no. that up. But basically, yeah. it we're, we're kind of find we find out who was the celebrity to die just before your birthday. Right. Would you have remembered, or do you want? clues i don't remember any big deaths that let's, year. let's have clues then I, i'll give you some clues yeah it, it's well first of all some of the the deaths that we've had to do in previous shows that we've recorded have been very upsetting yeah and <laughs> it, it really have not only brought the tone down of the kind of metaphorical party but of the podcast because <laughs> and, and i just feel really bad for doing it this is a bit more Respectable. A happy death. Not a happy death, if but it's one. it's it's we had somebody. Paul Pot one time didn't we have Yo! Paul Pot? And it was like <laughs> <laughs> we can all celebrate that. Yeah, but um, yeah, but this is somebody who was um of a certain age, died young, but not that young. Okay. And somebody who absolutely um did the same thing as what you do in a way. Ooh. Yeah, there's pants up over his linen trouser yes so try and give you a clue oh, using brings he, brings he bought a xylophone so he's going keep to forgetting that i have yeah. i'm going to give you a clue as to some <laughs> so, so the the first clue that you're getting is it's somebody who made a living um the same way that you make a living okay less so you teacher. patty more okay. you no i'm not a teacher all right so what do you do for a living like this. Do you mean sort of musical comedy? Yeah. That sort of thing? Comedian? Oh, yes, I know. I know. Do you know a who it is? Comedian. Comedian. Is, yeah. So I'm going to give you a clue. What's your favourite song? What what song have we been talking about? Uh, the, 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 the Don't Speak by okay. No Doubt. So. It, it just sounds like, it, if you don't know who this death is, it just sounds like you're playing that really badly. That's but literally that, the point. I, of oh, course, it's against Dawson. Yes, oh, Dawson. <laughs> I know it's the Why point. did you piss all over what the I'm little fun is, game? Anybody listening that doesn't know that it's Les Dawson will just be like, <laughs> But they were going to find out. That was the whole <laughs> but point. I didn't know how long this was going to go on. <laughs> how long are you going to play but badly? But I might have been on for yes, about Dawson. 30 more seconds and then we would have told her. 
<laughs> so that was quite that would no, have been well, quite a fun game. That, that was, I that got was it. quite good. Did, no, did you when remember? you said like play, no, I don't remember. I don't remember that being the year he died. No, no but you just guessed that it was yeah. being played by. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Any I sort of playing it and. Uh, did you enjoy Les Dawson's work? I loved them. Yeah. So. His whole shtick was he would play. St- All I remember about him is that he would play stuff on the piano and make deliberately make mistakes, and then look as if yeah. why well, didn't make that was that? Did he do other stuff? At no, all? Like, oh, yeah. he was, no, he was, was like a proper variety. Like he never did. I, I never really saw him standing up. He was always sitting at the piano. He turned sideways and tell a bit of a story. Oh no, he and did stand. He, he like did he big sort of in the variety up? scene uh, for decades. And is he all right? That, yeah. Hmm? Is he all right? In what way? Like he's yeah, dead. He, can he? <laughs> I worked. It's not great. No, I know he's dead. But I worked on a I worked on a project where it was oh, like an yes. archive project where you would have to go through and find. You were trying to find people in the seventies and eighties. And, oh yeah, and, you, mean, and pretty much everybody from that era. Yeah. You sort of go, no, you can't. You can't he's, have them. He sort of popularized the mother-in-law joke. You know, like oh, yeah. the mother-in-law, this, that, and the other. But I, I don't think it would be anything. He you could still play air it today yeah. and not, okay. not worry about it. So you it. could have a, a Les Dawson, Dawson, Dawson. Les Dawson. You're yeah. you're taking it too far. You're actually getting like instead of playing bad tunes, you're getting the names wrong. Les Dawson. Les Dawson. That was my little trick. But he to he this. actually he actually was a good musician. Like that's, you have to be yes, really good course. to be able to right. play. Yeah, it, my to my be able friend to do Mark, that. he plays. Well, that's why I was able to do that just now. Of course. It's an extra level. He was saying that that is actually extremely hard. It is to play it like that and to play it and and hit the right wrong notes if you know yes. what I mean so it doesn't look like you're just you know because you have to still it still needs to be recognisable yeah. enough for you to know that it's wrong and, and yeah yeah so no Les Dawson were, was, was brilliant and who was it no I'm thinking of the the joke wasn't it that um, Mark and Wise you're playing all the right notes oh not, Andre I'm, I'm, playing all, I'm playing all the right notes but not necessarily the right yeah. order yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what kind of a party would you have actually had when you were when you were 14 so, 18 so um, I actually had a surprise party that year for my 14th birthday. Um, and my parents told me I was going out for dinner. And so I got on my, as you did, my denim shorts with my black tights underneath it. And my love beads from, my love beads from. <laughs> God. <laughs> Very progressive 14 year old. <laughs> Do you know what? I used to go to Fresh Garbage all the time and get my, get jewellery and stuff there and they were called love beads right. and I didn't know that was weird <laughs> I was telling somebody about that not that long ago going you know we would have just gone downtown to buy love beads <laughs> on a Saturday that afternoon that was like when I were talking about to Holly about the um, button ups Adidas buttons she was like oh poppers like <laughs> what, what, are, poppers. what are, so are love, love beads? beads what are actual love beads well there are not I've just read about it obviously there no I'm not I wasn't even asking you in particular I'm just saying <laughs> there are what were your love beads? I don't even what they what are the No, what are they, they were were love beads? <laughs> what are what are the now? What are yeah. what, what's, what are what's the, the sexual the dirty, version? The sexual version are something you shove up your bum. Up your bum? Yeah. So like male or female? Any? Okay. Non binary. And then <laughs> you you No, I thought that they were I thought they were for ladies. And then you just pull them back out again. Well, you don't I don't know, them, you I need to ask someone who uses them. I don't Try and make a noise. Like, <laughs> <laughs> It's not like a, I think you're getting some kind of a buzz. It's not like a yeah. It's not like kind I don't of, know. It's not. Like, I've never experienced it. It's but not imagine. like putting napkins up your sleeve and then pulling them out. <laughs> like, and you, it's you, just a magic trick. Yeah, you just like. But that. yours were your, was a, it was just a necklace. Necklace okay. called love beads. But anyway, that's what. Anyway, I've got off the point here. <laughs> Gone off track. So, <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> so I got all dressed up and and um, they took me to a surprise party and we ended up. They drove me to the Stormont Hotel, which was like. It's very corporate. <laughs> <laughs> you were doing a corporate, corporate with your song. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was it was in fr- it was for peace. It was actually John. I was Hume there was at there the sign and yeah, all the you political came out with parties. Bono and Bono and Trimble and <laughs> and um, so I walked in and and I got a sense that they were because they were all like, oh my god, right, right, you ready like this? And they opened the door into the restaurant and there was. <laughs> Just two girls sat at a table and just stared. Oh at no! And one of them was my friend, um, and one of them was a girl I knew a little bit. She was all like, "Happy birthday, Tracy!" And um, <laughs> <laughs> and I I carried on like I had just been given an Oscar. I was like, oh. "I don't believe it!" Oh my god! So there's like two people at this surprise party. Were you dying inside? But you're acting like, or did you actually? No, I actually thought this was, was amazing, brilliant. right? Oh. So my sisters were like. <laughs> 
<laughs> and we sat there like at the dessert. I was still going to the waiter. Like, did you know? I mean, <laughs> who else was in on this? This was. I have you kept this picking a secret? <laughs> this is really upsetting. <laughs> How long? Wait, don't be sad. Don't be sad. I got. I've a, I'm a very. I'm a very happy person now. Oh. But um, no, it was. It, it. It. I really enjoyed it. They sort. I don't know how much my mum paid for them to be there, but they. They got a free meal. <laughs> they got a free meal. <laughs> and, and then I was like, oh, back to mine. We'll watch some Blossom on video. I've got all of Blossom video taped. What was so, Blossom? <gasps> I remember the name now. I can't think of it. Blossom what the hell it was. was like, uh, what the hell was it? How would you describe it? It's like a teenage um, comedy drama. American thing, was yeah, it? Yeah, you know, oh, Maya okay. Bialik, she was in The Big Bang Theory. She played one of the characters in that. But anyway, she was a bit the like main. Dawson's Creek, an early Dawson's Creek, or is it a wee bit more teeny? It was Bob? more, t- it was more, God, do you know what? It would probably be on the Disney Channel now, I think, if it was out now. It was more oh, sort okay, of like. Yeah. I do remember the Joey name. Lawrence was in it. No, that's nah, not ringing any bells here. Somebody, some I, I've made it up. But anyway, it was <laughs> it was not cool. We'll leave it at that. And I was like, I've got them all in video. So that was your birthday. Back to mine. And then we stuck on Everybody Hurts by REM, and <laughs> they just walked out, and I was just left like that. <laughs> ding 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 ding. <laughs> Hand out the love beads. Everybody, <laughs> happy birthday, dear. <laughs> just leave her with her love beads. Listen to everybody hurts just in a room by herself. <laughs> oh, it sounds so sad. No, it wasn't sad. Don't be sad for me. Just be what happy it happened. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. Oh, no. very good. All right. Well, Luke, thanks very much for coming on, Teresa. I really enjoyed that. Did you enjoy it yourself? I did. Well, we'll talk about, well, let's let's just bring up to date everybody, you know, what you do now. Stand up, back doing stand up. You had a wee yeah. bit of a break. Just a couple of months off there, but I'm back now doing doing gigs again and doing a show in the Waterfront Studio in October. Yes. We'll Please buy tickets. We'll for tickets and stuff, yeah. See, there's only about three left, oh, so no, you better I, get them. I will I, we'll definitely be quick, at quick. that. Me and my wife will Upgrade. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> God, I'm such a. <laughs> That's what you do. You got to do that. Yeah. Moving to the big one. Or second night. Do you like an upgrade or a second night? What's your What's your vibe? Uh, probably I'd rather have an upgrade. I don't want to have to do it all over again. Yeah. What about you, Patty? Do you like a second night? No, or I'd rather do more nights. I like I like doing more yeah. of it and repeating it. Whatever's more yeah. financially viable, basically. What's going to make me more money? That's what I'd say. All right, right thanks So you're, you're motivated about money and you're just lazy. <laughs> I'm just, I'm about the heart, man. I'm just going to get Ian Thompson to do them. Yes. <laughs> the Wonder Year with Patty Raff.